I want to do an MEng. What's the experience like? Is it hard? Do you balance your social life and school? Do you want me to be like honest? There's so much stuff I didn't think I was going to like learn that I didn't really want to learn, but here we are. What's the experience like? I hope the light for flickering is not too annoying. I'm literally just studying and I'm studying a one of the business models that I have signed myself up for. So we're only allowed to do one out of all the modules we choose. And I picked one called corporate finance, which is a lot. <laughs> yeah, I just kind of wanted to document this whole like process of like studying and how hard and how intensive it is and how like the whole online situation is like going. You might hear a few clicks and that's just literally just me clicking my mouse. Back when I said that I was really enjoying my degree, um, I don't know what I was thinking really. Maybe this video can just like shed some light on what it's actually like. This degree is literally the reason why I've been gone for so long, but just the whole process, I'm gonna have to start changing how I do my videos because the whole process of like getting ready, putting some makeup on, even putting makeup on the thought of it is just like, no. I got a few questions about chemical engineering in general, just doing my little hiatus. And I thought I could answer them quickly whilst I'm just like organizing some folders on my laptop, if you guys don't mind. But basically someone asked in my YouTube comments, can they still do chemical engineering if they've only done a biology and maths A level, so they didn't do physics? And usually for any kind of engineering, physics and math is basically like a requirement and chemistry is just kind of like nice to have. It is mainly physics and maths. For A-levels, I did French, biology, chemistry, maths. I dropped French at AS and I continued on with the three at A-level. So biology, chemistry, maths, I ended up getting two A-stars in biology and chem and then an A in maths. And I did chemical engineering. So I finished my undergrad, doing my master's now. Will you be put at a disadvantage if you don't do physics? Honestly. I would say no but what I will say is that certain physics related questions or like physics related stuff on the course it won't come as naturally to you as it will to other people that have studied physics I think in first year in first semester there was one module that you had to take to recap your physics basically to relearn or not relearn but to learn all the physics you'll need to take you through the course it was also the same for people who didn't who hadn't done chemistry did I feel like it was a enough honestly no because as you guys know if you do an a level there's certain things you just know that's literally ingrained into your into your brain like i can look at skeletal formula and be like yeah that's that that's that that's that with physics it's harder for me a bit harder to conceptualize certain things obviously i've done lots of physics now sometimes i have to sort of sit down and think okay go back to the fundamentals and think what is this <laughs> like how does this relate sort of thing so that's answer the question i don't think i put a disadvantage no but i think it is something that you would have to work on at university so don't don't let not doing physics at a level discourage you from choosing chemical engineering or any kind of engineering it just means that you might have to put more effort into that specific topic or physics related topics at uni if that makes sense someone asked do i have a social media that you can follow me on I don't really post on Instagram that much. My Instagram handle is in the description. Please, can you also make a video talking more about what you're studying, advanced chemical engineering? So my master's is basically just a master's in chemical engineering. They call it advanced chemical engineering to basically distinguish it from the undergrad, I think, because the undergrad is just called chemical engineering. But essentially my degree is 12 months and it's basically sort of paralleled with the undergrad fourth year. So that doesn't make any sense. So basically some of my modules or basically majority of my modules also have fourth year MEng chemical engineering students in those modules as well. The only major difference is it, the title is like MSc, not MEng, and um, obviously it's longer, three months longer. And we have like a MSc like dissertation slash thesis we have to do, but it's basically a, a project that's individual, which is also what you do in fourth year of an MEng degree, but it's slightly, I think it's slightly longer. I'm not quite sure. There are only like a few differences between them. So my modules, when I'm filming, like I can't recall things quite fast. So I'm gonna check on here and just like read out the list. So I'm doing, 
dynamic behavior process systems, which is basically not assuming things are at steady state and basically modeling or designing models to model what certain parameters look like over time, temperature, you know, pressure, mold the flow rate, things like that. To add A, B and C into a batch, I stir it, it has a certain reaction associated with it with a certain rate equation. How is the profile for my pressure going to look like over the course of like five hours or over the course of five days, dependent on the kinetics in the reaction and whatnot. The lecture for that is excellent. Colloid and interface science. So that's all about learning about things like mayonnaise, <laughs> various science based theory based module. I also do advanced bioprocess engineering. I do biochemical engineering and I do advanced bioprocess engineering. Um, so both of those are basically to do with how we make like vaccines and how we design a process which is based on, it has like a biological basis. It's very hard to describe these these modules. The advanced part is more about looking at a cellular level, so looking at DNA and RNA synthesis and you know PCR polymerase chain reaction and different omics technologies, things like that. Advanced process design, which is basically just like a big design project. The design project is what you submit and that's it. I also do advanced environmental engineering, basically the same thing, but mo more with environmental focus. How do I design, how do I select and design a best available technique for reducing a certain pollutant from going into the environment and modeling exactly what would happen to that pollutant if it got into the environment? Would it end up in air mostly? Would it end up in water mostly? Would it end up in biota? And then lastly, uh, practical process engineering in the oil and gas industry. So this one's a bit not kind of relevant anymore because I did a summer internship in BP in environmental science. I don't know, I just sort of want, wanted more of an overview on the whole practical, like the process engineering part of the oil and gas industry. But honestly, I only wanted the first lecture because all the other lectures are about like heat transfer. They're about like, just so much stuff I didn't think I was going to like learn that I didn't really want to learn but here we are that's the thing with imperial the first two weeks of every semester you get to like sample all the the lectures available for that semester but you've only got two weeks to do that and once you make your decision you can't then change what modules you chose the problem is the first two weeks of any module are like really easy and they don't really show you what the rest of the content looks like which is really annoying so you kind of make your decision based on those first two weeks which I mean it's better than nothing but I have made one or two mistakes in choosing modules out of the eight modules I had to choose so let me know if you guys want to hear more about my degree it's kind of painful to talk about but that's an exaggeration it's just kind of like oh please do you know if there are any postgraduate chemistry courses that blend both computer science and chemical engineering Hmm. Maybe some of the um, skills you learn in computer science sort of are applicable in some chemical engineering courses, but your best bet is basically doing a chemical engineering course and maybe asking for access to some of the computer science modules because I know I can do that here at Imperial. What's your opinion on an engineering student getting a MacBook Pro? As you probably are aware, a lot of engineering softwares aren't built for Mac OS, they're built for Windows. So you might struggle in that department. I don't know every single bit of software that is needed for every single engineering degree. A few ones for this degree that I've never even heard of. You just have to sort of like decide what is important to you and whether you can go through the extra effort trying to get software on Macs, things like that. I've got MacBook Pro. I got one November of my first year. I got it because I knew that there was boot camp on it. And boot camp is basically where you can partition. I partitioned like 50 gigs of my solid state hard drive to Windows so that if I ever needed to download a Windows software, I could do it using bootcamp that doesn't bother you i would definitely say go for a macbook pro if you want one because at the end of the day you'll still have it after uni <laughs> can you make a video telling how your laptop was of help in university my laptop was i guess it was just as helpful as any other student laptop would be i took it everywhere it was super light because i got a 13 inch one honestly i just love macs i can't I, there's not there's not really anything specific about uni that i can say about them apart from them being reliable fast. I hope that helps. If you need anything specific, anything more specific, do let me know. There are also some questions on Instagram. Let me have a look at those. So guys, I got myself an iPad Pro. Unboxing video coming soon.
all these questions are from a girl called Raquel. She says, like, how, what are the internships like? I've done one video on my internship at Unilever. Um, I need to do another video on my internship at BP because that was different. Is it really necessary to work in a plant as a chemical engineer? No. It's good experience to be around a plant and to learn how it works and how everything flows together and the kind of science and the kind of operating softwares that are used and having chats with the operators. But no, it's not necessarily necessary to work in a plant. I want to do an MNG. What's the experience like? Is it hard? Do you balance your social life and school? What's the experience like? Do you want me to be like honest? Quite frankly, my social life consists of me doing movie nights with my family at the moment. During my undergrad, sort of. Yeah, you kind of do get a balance if you try to have a balance. Your degree is very demanding. Yeah, so that's it. I think that's, that's the rest of this video. I think I'm just gonna, I've literally just been making, oh, you can't even see it, making so many notes. This isn't even engineering, this is business. <laughs> This is all the business module. And that's just one of the, the lectures. That's just, This is half of the week's content. I know why I chose this and I'm so grateful that I'm here. But at the same time, it's like, this is long. And there's no, literally no one that you can relate to physically. Like my sister is a chemist, but this is engineering, it's different. I'm gonna end the video here. Watch out for my next video. It might be coming soon. It might not be coming soon, depending on my grades i'm joking not my grades depending on that how much time i've got and stuff uh subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet do you make sure you turn on that notification bell make sure you like and comment comment any questions you have about chemeng um anything you want to see and i will see you guys in the next video